Hey everybody, today we're going to build a portable Windows operating system on a USB stick. This means that you'll be able to plug that USB stick into a PC, boot your own personalized version of Windows from that stick, do some work, then power down the PC, move that stick to a different PC, and start right back up where you left off. On a side note, in my last video, I showed you how to make a portable Linux operating system on a stick. Sort of like your very own extra PC, but much, much cheaper. In that video, I also went over some of the pros and cons of a portable OS, and I talk about why you may not even want to build an OS on a stick. And if you want to see that, I'll toss a video card up right here, and you can check that out for yourself. A lot of what I cover in that video is relevant in this video as well, so I don't want to spend a lot of time repeating myself and wasting anybody's time who may have watched that video already. But back to the Windows OS on a stick, the best part is creating this drive is free. Well, mostly. I'll cover the details of that later on in this video. Before you get started, I want you to know that this process is USB stick picky. I recommend a pretty high quality USB stick of at least 64 gigabytes in capacity or more. I tried this project on a few lower end sticks and it failed on all of them. I'll put a link to the exact Samsung USB stick that I used in this video. If you use a different USB stick, let us know in the comments what stick you use and whether or not it worked out for you. So in addition to the USB stick, you're going to need a Windows 10 ISO file. I just use the Windows 10 media creation tool. I'll put a download link for the media creation tool in the description. After it's done downloading, use that tool to create your installation media and uncheck use recommended options for this PC. Personally, I changed architecture to both and in this video, I'm going to make a stick with a 32-bit installation of Windows Home. And remember how I said earlier that this process is free? Well, as long as you stick with the Windows Home version, it is free. If you want a better version of Windows, you'll have to invest in the paid version of the software that we'll use later on. And if you don't mind putting up with the Windows activation watermark in the lower right of your screen, you won't even need to buy a Windows license key. But that's your call. Personally, I would just install the home version and try it out before investing any money. It'll take a few minutes for the media creation tool to make your ISO file. In the meantime, head over to haslio.com and click on the Windows to Go tab. Then click on Win to USB and download the latest version. Once the media creation tool has created your ISO file, you can run the Win to USB software and begin making your portable Windows USB stick. So click on this folder icon and browse to your Windows ISO file. This software works with Windows 7 or newer. Then select the edition of Windows that you want to install. I'm choosing Windows Home to keep things free. Here, I've chosen the 32-bit version of Windows Home. You would probably be better off installing the 64-bit version, as it will outperform a 32-bit installation. But I'm going with the 32-bit installation to maximize a broader range of compatibility. It's really probably unnecessary, as most computers built within the past 10 years have 64-bit processors anyway. You'll just have to make that judgment call for yourself as to which version you want to use. Next, select the USB device that you want to overwrite with your portable installation. This will completely format that USB stick, destroying any data that is on it. So make sure you select the right stick and that you want to do that. This is my 64 gigabyte Samsung USB stick, so that's what I'll choose. I'm choosing the GPT partition scheme because that's what's available in the free version of Win to USB. It's giving a final warning that all data on that USB stick will be destroyed. So when you're ready, click Yes to proceed. On this screen, I chose Legacy as the installation mode because that's what's available in the free version of this software. And then click Next. This part took a while, so it's probably best to go do something else for a bit and come back. Unless you like to watch slow progress bars build, I mean, if that's the case, then this is right up your alley. But after that's done, you're ready to remove the USB stick and finish the installation from within the Windows Portable OS. I've plugged that stick into my Surface here, and I've previously set the Surface to boot from USB as a priority. So we see that we have the spinning circle and the getting ready on-screen message. That's a good sign. On a side note here, and for any Windows 10 installation, 
I recommend not being connected to the internet for this part of the installation. If you have an ethernet port, unplug the cable and do not connect to Wi-Fi. I do this because I use offline accounts and it's just an additional step of personal privacy. And you can just connect to the internet after you've set up an offline account. But if you like using a Microsoft account, you can ignore everything I just said about not connecting to the internet. All right, so I've gone through the Windows setup and we're logged in under the offline account that I created for this installation. It's safe now to connect to the internet, so I'll join my home Wi-Fi network. I'm also going to download and install the Firefox web browser as a test of persistence. Then I'm downloading OBS Studio and I'm gonna change the desktop background. And after all of that, this is actually performing much better than I expected for running from a USB stick. Now I'm gonna shut the system down, remove the USB stick, and plug it in and boot from another machine to make sure all of those changes stuck around. But before I do that, I'm gonna power this Surface back up and make sure it boots from its internal OS. And I see that it does, so we're good to go there. So moving this stick to another PC right away, we see the desktop background change that I made on the other machine. So that's a good sign. I'm gonna browse into my downloads folder and there is the OBS Studio installer that I downloaded on the other machine. I'm going to complete that installation here and use it to do a screen recording. And there we go, much better. We can see that Firefox is indeed installed from the session on the other PC. I'm not gonna go too deep into performance. I'm just going to look at some video playback on YouTube as a pass or fail. This really isn't about performance, but about convenience and portability. And video playback and web browsing looks fine to me. Set up some decent lighting to get a more optimal so now that we've done a portable installation of both Linux and Windows, which one can I say is better? Well, it's kind of up to you to decide. Performance-wise, Linux is almost always faster and more efficient on system resources than Windows. So if you're looking for speed, use Linux. But, and I never thought I would live to say this, but in the security department, Windows, when compared to these two methods, is actually more secure than the portable Linux USB because there's an actual user account and password associated with the installation on the Windows USB stick. Now, with that being said, it's not exactly something that I would want to forget and leave in a public place and trust to the fates, but it does at least add one more layer of protection than the portable Linux USB stick does. As I mentioned in my last video, and I do want to reiterate this, I think that there is just too many risks involved with a dedicated portable OS. I would much rather use a Linux Live USB stick that runs in an instance as a diagnostic and repair tool to fix a broken PC than to rely on a USB Band-Aid. Not to say there isn't a use for a full installation of an operating system on a USB stick. I mean, if that's what works for you, then you do you. But with all of that being said, I'm gonna wrap this video up with a shout out to my supporters. If you would like to support this channel, either on Patreon or Ko-Fi, there will be links in the description. Donations are appreciated, but never expected. Remember, the best way to support this channel is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time with more money-saving tech tips, tutorials, and tech reviews.